Hi, it's Tina today, and today my tutorial is to show you how to use the jelly plate in your uh, limited edition kit this month. So this is a jelly plate. You want to keep the packaging that it comes in because it's a great way to store the jelly plate. So you just take your jelly plate out, keep all the packaging, the instructions, and take off the two plastic um, covers. Make sure that you use your jelly plate on a non-porous um, surface. I actually flip an old cookie sheet over and use it on that and it works really well because the cookie sheet obviously is not porous and it cleans up really nice to the paint so take the plastic sheets and put it on your non porous surface and then get all your supplies together um, you've got your paint you've got your different textures that you want to use so in the limited edition kit comes a texture packet so I've just included some kind of fun random pieces of things you can use for texture. You can use the stencil that comes in the kit and then the foam squares. You can cut different shapes out of these foam squares to make your own textures for your jelly plate. Then you also need some paper. Um, I use some heavier cardstock paper. Uh, it works really well. And then this is just deli paper. I actually love using deli paper because then you can create um, some of your own tissue type paper backgrounds and it's perfect for layering on canvases and stuff. And then also in the limited edition kit comes a, a composition book and you can use that as well. So the first thing you want to do is put some of your basic craft acrylic paint down on your jelly plate and take the brayer that's in the kit and, and brayer it out. And then I also, which you've seen me in my art journal tutorials, have either a piece of paper or I like using my art journal to brayer off the excess paint onto it and you saw me do that there. So then you just take some of your textures and start pushing it gently into the jelly plate. When you have a texture you like, take your paper and rub it down and lift it off and you start building different textures. Mono printing is what jelly plate is. So you build color after color, layer after layer with different textures. You can always do more than one print from one coat of paint on your jelly plate. So make sure that you have extra papers. I usually have a lot of space around me because I add different layers to different pieces of paper. So you can at least get two, sometimes three different prints from one application of paint. So you can see me putting my green acrylic paint down now. And this bubble wrap makes an awesome print. It's one of my favorites with the jelly plate. You can see those cool circles. So I'm going to take some paper, rub it down. You can also use the brayer to um, add um, some weight to it when you're imprinting. And now I'm going to use a piece of the deli paper. And you can see it's not much of a print, but it will add some of the layers to it. And I'm actually going to go ahead and use a third one. And you can see the more that you do that, the paint lifts right off the jelly plate. So you really don't have to clean it in between. So I took one of the foam squares and I cut some shapes out of it. So now my next um, one that I'm going to show you is with those shapes from the foam shape. So I'm just going to brayer out some of the orange paint. and I'm going to place the shapes down. So you can leave the shapes like this on there and I'll show you there's two different ways you can use different textures on your jelly plate. So I'm going to put my um, deli paper down. You can see it's one that I use the green and you can see since it is kind of bumpy I'm going to use the brayer and go over it just to make sure that I get a good contact on the deli paper and I lift it up so now you can start building some color to that. I'm going to do it again to get a second print. And you can see it, it's a little bit different. Now you can remove the pieces that are on there. And now you can get another print from that. So it's going to be the, the negative, the reverse of what you already had. So you can see it created a different look. Um, the white was actually from my stash. I did not include that in the limited edition kit. So just take out some white acrylic paint that you have in your stash. And the same thing, just brayer it on to your jelly plate. And now I'm going to use an item from the texture kit. And this is just some drywall tape, which is awesome. It creates a really cool look 
um, to the texture to the jelly plate. You can see me just pushing it down into several spots on the jelly plate. And I don't really mind that my fingertips are in that either. It just adds more interest to it. And this um, plastic flower, I think it was a hot pad, a heat pad, I thought would be a, full, a really fun texture. You can see me printing it now on the deli plate or deli paper. This was actually one of my favorite prints from the whole day of me doing it. And it's a print that I used on my journal page. You'll see that tutorial um, at some other time. See me adding some more paint because I want to add some more um, texture to another piece of paper. You don't have to cover the whole jelly plate at one time. You can actually use multiple colors and you can have them blend. So that's what I'm doing here with white and yellow. And I'm using some of that drywall tape again. And this time I'm going to just leave it sit in some spots. And I'm going to use the stencil that was in the limited edition kit. This actually turned out really awesome. It created a really fun pattern on the um, jelly plate. And again, because the stencil has a little bit of thickness, using a brayer, it really helps to try to get into those crevices. And I'm just taking the, actually the drywall tape and um, taking any paint that's on it and adding it to my paper. So I'm going to just add to the pattern that's already on there from the stencil from the previous uh, print. And I'm going to add some pink and put some more impressions into the jelly plate. And it started building a really fun print on my paper. And see, just having all of your papers handy to you so you can keep building to them. So this added that really fun flower shape with the pink on top of a print that I had already had. You can see why jelly uh, printing is so addictive. You can seriously can sit and create for hours um, and it's so much fun and it's something that's unique every single time you do it um, and you can use it in all of your mixed media projects. This time I thought I would just experiment by adding some drops of yellow paint just to get a different effect and I'm just placing my stencil from the kit the exclusive frog dog stencil onto it. Now I'm looking for some more texture. And it really didn't turn out how I want, but it's fun to experiment with it. And you can see with every print after each other, it just keeps pulling the paint off the jelly plate. So now I use some more of the foam uh, squares to create some shapes. I just cut out some randomly sized circles. And I'm using that now on my jelly plate. And it created a really fun pattern on that print. And again, like I said, you don't have to always stay with one color. You can mix the colors. If you like that look, you can mix the colors on your jelly plate. It's really nice to go to a dollar store, actually. They have an awesome selection of textures and just kind of look and go up and down the aisles and look for things that would create a really fun texture and pattern to your jelly plates. It's, it's endless. You can obviously use your stash of stencils, which is really a great way to use your jelly plate. But just household items, the bottoms of flip-flops always have a really fun pattern to them. 
like I said, go through your dollar store and go up and down the aisles. There's an endless amount of um, ideas and textures that exist out there. Also included in the kit is a catalyst wedge. I actually totally forgot to pull it out when I was creating with my jelly plate. You can create your own swirls and lines and squiggles on the jelly plate too. Um, it's a great tool to have with your jelly plate. And I, like I said, I totally forgot to pull mine out and use them on my jelly plate. This is one of my favorite stencils, and I was curious to see what would happen by printing right onto the composition book book that comes in the limited edition kit. And actually worked really well. It created a really fun um, beginning to a background. So now I'm going to get the reverse of the print from all of the circles. And you can see that's an awesome pattern on that jelly plate. And again, you don't have to use the entire jelly plate. You can use pieces and parts on your prints. You don't have to print the whole background. You can use sections of it, like I am here. And it's nice too because um, you can use your basic craft acrylic paint. So when it goes on sale at your local craft store, Michael's Hobby Lobby, um, when it's on, on sale, you can use that basic craft acrylic paint to create these mono prints. So it's a um, it's a pretty inexpensive hobby, and you can have an endless supply of colors just off of basic acrylic paint. So again, you can see me just playing around with some of the different shapes I cut from the foam just to try to get a really fun background. I'm going to use that book again, the composition book, which would make a great journaling book, an art journal page. Um, it wasn't quite what I wanted, but I could build on that pink page and it would create an awesome art journal page. And you could also use these foam pieces in your mixed media projects too um, if you wanted to. So you can see I just keep going and keep going with the different papers. So that is it for my tutorial today. Um, I will follow up with another tutorial on how I use the jelly paper prints for a canvas piece that I did. But I hope you enjoyed this and I hope uh, you'll in be inspired by jelly, jelly plate printing just like I was. Thank you for watching.